Kitting is a process used by the manufacturing to reduce the line site complexity, material handling, equipment costs, and pick zone or golden zone obstructions. Uh, kitting can be performed either from a specific cell away from the assembly line or directly from the stores or from, from the supplier even. Kitting can be defined as a process of delivering all the required parts or components for the assembly of a specific section of the final product. Now there's a difference between kitting and subassembly. You often see it get mixed up. Subassembly is a process often confused with kitting. It's a subassembly may involve kitting, but the actual kitting process is completed prior to the subassembly and delivered to a subassembly cell. That subassembly cell then becomes the point of use rather than the line site. A subassembly may be defined as a process of utilizing two or more parts or components uh, to build a new and independent part number, which includes all the components of the subassembly. Subassemblies are delivered to the assembly line as an individual part number and ready to install on the final product. The part component numbers used to create the subassembly are normally no longer used in the final assembly. That being said, there might be 10 parts being delivered to a subassembly cell via a kit. And a subassembly cell will then use, utilize those 10 parts to build a, a final part number. That part number will be delivered as a single unit to the assembly line. The materials group may deliver the components for the subassembly to the point of use through either individual part numbers or as a kit. Often once assembly is built to the responsibility of getting the new part to the assembly line is the responsibility of the assembly group. Usually once the, once the subassembly will start, materials no longer will handle the parts from that, that point forward. However, there are exceptions to that rule and it should be, should be evaluated on an individual basis. But we're here to talk about kitting. So let's talk more about it. When should a kit be utilized? Kits should be at least considered whenever one or more of the following conditions apply, but should be used only if the business case justifies the need. Several small components are needed to build one complete portion of an overall assembly, uh, such as seal kits within a cylinder, ring kits for pistons in an engine, an antenna assembly on a car. Kitting should be used when a particular component is sequenced due to slight variances in the specification, such as color, type or model. Um, so we might be looking at door handles, maybe hard drives within a computer, a different model unit being built on the same assembly line could be an example. It's important to note that the sequencing requires careful planning and strict adherence to the procedures set in place for the control. Sequencing will not be covered in this webinar though, that could be another webinar. So setting up the kit. Setting up the kit requires a lot of planning and a fair amount of research. Kitting teams should and needs to be formed. Possible kitting assemblies must be identified. Space away from the assembly line must be reserved and set up for kitting cells. A team meeting area should be set up, and regular meetings and dates and times should be determined, and they should be adhered to. For successful buy-in by each field that will utilize the kit in any way should have a representative on the team. So if skilled trades, which often will not have anything to do with it, is going to be on there, they need to have a, a team member. Uh, materials needs to have a team member. The production line needs to have a team member. Supervision needs to have team members. Safety needs to have a team member. That all needs to be represented on that kitting team. A materials engineer will generally be the team project manager. Uh, the materials engineer puts together the proper business case to justify the need for a kitting cell. He's responsible for setting up the meetings. Works with the plant management to ensure all team members can allot time to the team, which is very important. The plant manager has to give you that buy-in tracks and publishes meeting minutes to the team and management. He also tracks the budget to ensure the funding is available to set up a successful kit. Setting up these kits is often a little bit expensive and you have to have that approval. And he has the overall responsibility for the final outcome of the kit. Now, as mentioned, we also want to have a materials team member. The materials team member will be either the operator setting up the kits, so picking the parts, or a designated representative such as a team lead. He ensures the picking process is efficient within the union guidelines when applicable, helps ensure buy-in from the material team operators, provides feedback and the ability of the team to complete the task in the allotted cycle time. He's able to give past best practice information from previous kitting cells and helps avoid issues before they're implemented from the past experiences. He also assists in the flow of the kitting cell and will test the cell and recommend changes prior to putting the kitting cell into production. Another member will be from the production team. The production team member will be either the operator using the kit, such as the assembly line worker, 
or a designated representative, such as a team leader. The production team member will provide feedback and the usability of the kit. Uh, suggest additional parts to be added to the kit. Might recommend to remove all the parts contained within the kit. Uh, provide input to the organization of the kit and how it's presented to the line. It helps to ensure the buy-in from the production team members. It also tests the kit to ensure the cycle time can be met on the line side. Another team member that you're going to want to have is the equipment engineer, often called an F&E representative. The equipment engineer will be responsible for the acquisition of all equipment required to set up and utilize the kit efficiently and effectively. The equipment engineer will work with suppliers to create a kit delivery method. Uh, they'll create a kitting box, kitting container, or a kitting rack, whichever the case may be. The test the kit delivery method to ensure it's properly set up in the most efficient manner, ensuring the parts are safe and secure. Keywords right there, safe and secure. We don't want parts flopping around and banging into each other, uh, possibly scratching A surfaces. Then you have the equipment engineer. He requires the required equipment to set up the cell, the racks, the indexers, the pick lights, containers. Sets up area where the kitting cell will be stationed, ensures the area is secure, clearly marks the area, puts racks, indexers, pick lights, and containers in place to set up the final kitting cell. Works with safety to ensure each piece of the equipment is both within safety guidelines and ergonomically correct prior to purchase. And it provides the team with input on cost and feasibility of the required equipment. Oftentimes a kit might just be, the idea of a kit may be scrapped from the beginning due to the exorbitant cost. Sometimes the kit boxes that are required to protect the parts will cost so much money that it makes the kit not worthwhile. These are all things that have to be determined and looked at. Now, on the kitting team, you also want to have safety and or ergonomics representation. The safety and ergonomics rep is a vital part of the team, although he's not really directly responsible for the selection of the kits or the setup. However, the person approves the location, ensures the setup of the kitting cell is safe, ensures all the ergonomic guidelines are followed and adhered to, gives input and safety approval for any equipment used in a kitting cell, such as the kitting box, kitting container, kitting rack, and kitting indexes. Sometimes kitting boxes might have sharp, sharp corners for the kitting containers. Uh, the kitting racks may be too tall or not ergonomically correct. Um, and often the indexers may need to have additional safety items put on them. So these are all things that you need to get the safety buy-in and the safety approval prior to having them built. It ensures the safety of the delivery, the flow, and the path of the marketplace to the kitting cell and from the kitting cell to the assembly line. Sometimes, most of the time when you're using kitting cells, you want to use a secondary plan to deliver parts to the, to the assembly line. So you may be using AGVs or AGCs to deliver it. So now the path is really, really important. How are they going to get there and where's the pedestrian areas? It provides the team with the best practice and input from past cells. Safety usually has been around for a long time, and they've seen a lot of kitting cells come and go. They know which ones work, and they know which ones don't. So their input on, on whether, whether a cell could be very successful is really important. You also want to have the materials manager as part of your team. The materials manager have the overall approval of the kitting cell. He recommends to the team the parts that should be put into a kit, assigns a kit part number, ensures management systems such as Kanban is updated to support the new kitting information, requires plant management approval, also there to remove roadblocks and barriers provides the best practice information and historical data. The materials manager may not be required to be at every meeting, but it's essential that he or she is kept informed throughout the entire process and all the meeting minutes are properly relayed to the, to the materials manager. The next thing you want to do is take a look at a kitting cell. Kitting cells are essential to have an effective kitting process. Kitting cells may be set up in a marketplace, in the assembly area, near the point of use, and at times delivered from the supplier in kits. The kitting cell should be used only for kitting purposes of the assigned parts, regardless of location, which also often limits the space available and the feasibility of a kit. Kitting cells should never be used as a secondary storage. It should never be used as a parking area. It should never be used as a pedestrian walk place. It should only be used for kitting. The kitting cell will need to be clearly marked and identified within the plant layout. There should be no motor power equipment operated within a kitting cell. Only essential personnel should be allowed in a kitting cell to minimize traffic, confusion, and the possibility of parts getting out of sequence. 
since kit install operators are on their feet all day, ergonomic flooring should probably be put in place, should minimize fatigue, and it also helps to ensure operator efficiencies. Kitting is primarily a materials operation, so a cell will need to be staffed by the materials group. The head count of the cell should only be high enough to properly and effectively maintain the cycle time. If the cell is located in the stores or the marketplace, it's possible that the currently assigned staff may do the kitting while picking and issuing the parts. If the cell is set up online or elsewhere within a plant, the materials group will need a staff to sell. Since kitting saves time and space on the assembly line, it's possible that production may provide materials group with personnel rather than hiring additional heads, thereby saying we're transferring people from production to materials. Now that these people now report to materials rather than adding headcount to the overall operation. Kitting employees will need to be properly trained on computer usage, picking sequence, and problem identification issues. If you take a look at kitting containers, there's no dead or hard set rules other than the parts must be safe and contained. So you can see here a few examples of the kitting containers. Kitting containers can come in many shapes, many forms, many sizes. A kitting container needs to be made to complement the packaging, the delivery, and the point of use. If each one of those items are not met, the kitting container is not usable. The kitting container may need to be customized to fit and protect the parts along with being practical for packaging and for display at the point of use. What is the kitting delivery method? Delivery points should be limited to a maximum of two points of use locations, a kitting cell and an assembly line. Delivery to the kitting cell may be as simple as picking from the marketplace and setting up a kit at the pick point. Often the kitting cell is located within the plant area near the assembly line, which will require the use of motor power equipment, flow racks, containers, or other traditional material delivery methods. Delivery into the kitting cell should be a part of the normal flow route of the delivery drivers, not a new or separate routes. A new separate route should not be set up for kitting. Traffic congestion should be reduced utilizing delivery trains carrying several part numbers at once. Delivery to the point of use or the assembly line will be determined by the location of the kitting cell to the point of use. Traditional modal power delivery such as four trucks and tuggers is a very common method of delivery, but more efficient methods should be explored. Special racks on AGVs eliminate the need for additional headcount and reduces pedestrian safety issues within the plant. If the kitting cell is set up online, the kit may be able to ride along the assembly line, utilizing a special kit and packaging, such as the customized bags on hangers. When the kitting cell is set up close enough to the point of use, the kit may be hand-delivered. Regardless of the delivery method, safety, cycle time, and cost need to be considered first. Training. Training is essential to have an effective kitting operation. Each operator involved in a kit in any way will require thorough training on each step contained within their responsible task. A formal hands-on training course will need to be set up. Now, the class may be extensive and take several hours. Sometimes the class may only take a few minutes. SLPs need to be created and posted at each location involved in the kitting process. The SLP will need to be created by the kitting team and approved by management. The SLP will need to contain pictures and step-by-step -step written procedures. Operator feedback will be needed to improve the training and kitting procedures. Regular follow-up and flexibility will be required for any improvements on kitting. A kitting cell may change five times before it's ever perfected, and that's fine as long as we're getting it perfected and the input is coming from the proper people. Here's some samples of some kitting cells. You can see the ergonomic flooring and the different racks that are set up in different locations. Also, you can see some of the different uh, kit boxes that are utilized. As you can see, not all kit cells are the same. Some are large, some are smaller. Some contain bags. This is a kit cell that's actually feeding line side right here. So in review, what is kitting? The difference between kitting and sub-assemblies? When should kitting be utilized? It's the kitting team, setting up a kitting cell, staffing the kitting cell, Kidding containers, delivery methods, training, and sample pictures. Mm -hmm.